It's better start. to record in the progress. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for choosing to be with me today. Uh, I am a solution-focused uh, coach from uh, 2019. And for me, this is the first uh, webinar, part of this uh, interesting and very, very helpful uh, conference. Andrew, I think he's, uh, he has um, other, he has attended already other conferences under Solution Focus Umbrella. For me, it's, it's the first. Thank you. Uh, what I would like to tell you from the beginning, for, like uh, from a logistic perspective and admin, I know there are other sessions uh, going on in uh, some other parallel rooms. Uh, so for today, what I, I, what I want to transfer to you is very small and uh, it will um, take less than an hour. So I, I'm thinking that uh, probably in 40 minutes we will be finished <laughs> because uh, it's better to um, organically grow something. So this is the first interaction with me. I don't want you to go with, uh, full, uh, with your head full of information. Uh, for me, it's a great honor because um, I'm speaking for the first time to an international audience and speaking about uh, my coaching concept. I don't know if you all uh, see my, my little book, simple and little book <laughs> that uh, I brought into this world and I published it firstly on Amazon uh, last year in March. And I think it came at the right moment. And now I will ask you and I will uh, be very happy to hear at least one uh, one voice except uh, Andrew or Andovidu who already said something today. Uh, my question, and I'm very curious if you heard about the UCA model and when. <laughs> so the stage is for one of uh, one of you. <laughs> Okay, I see that Charlotte is saying it's new to me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Andrew, for sharing the, the Amazon link to, to the book. <laughs> oh, it's also new for you too. Okay, so I will uh, briefly introduce you this VUCA model. Who, and th this model is um, like coming from a, let's say from a hard, uh, hard part of the world, let's say the army, the military. It was um, used firstly in 1991 during the Cold War, and it was used by the military in the United States of America. And this acronym stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And we are having all these uh, in huge quantities since uh, at least 2020. And uh, we, we are building resilience. We build our uh, mental and not only mental, mental emotional forces to cope and to adapt to this VUCA world. And now I have another question for you. Yes, I, 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 I'm full of question. <laughs> I like to practice um, uh, also self monologue, self questioning, self questioning to, my, to myself whenever I feel the need. And from 2020, I feel this need uh, almost every day. <laughs> so uh, my question to you is from 2020, how did you cope with this uh, volatility, uncertainty, uh, complexity and ambiguity from the world? How, what um, tool, what anchor <laughs> from you, you use it the most? Everyone is shy, we're in, the, the person, family, okay. Yes, great, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, 
as Charlotte said, the time with a family, families, a big family, is a big family. I would say uh, for me, family is, um, when I speak about family, I'm thinking also of my close, close tribe of friends. <laughs> and um, we support one another during the process. And uh, there are these four things that also helped me during the, the lockdowns, the current crisis. And this is the model I, um, I, let's say I invented in uh, 2020 when I was delivering another webinar, but for Professional Women Network here in Romania, where I'm a mentor as well. And my remedy for living in these turbulent times is another VUCA acronym, but mine stands for vulnerability, uniqueness, courage, and authenticity. <laughs> so these four are my, like, my inner forces. And I built on, on, um, on the courage level more and more. And uh, one of the most um, important um, experience, life experience that uh, increased my level of knowledge was a um, health issue. <laughs> quite tough one. So um, that uh, this little book is part of my soul. It's uh, also a coaching tool that uh, I'm using it quite often in my solution focused um, coaching sessions. And in the book, at the end, I, um, I also build uh, around 26 questions. <laughs> and also, the questions are now on uh, these cards. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you will um, you will ask me <laughs> why a butterfly? Why? For me, the, uh, the butterfly is the, the symbol of metamorphosis. And this was a, sim a symbol that I uh, drew after the surgery, the, the tough surgery I had in 2014, when I was looking for several tools that I could help at that time to see the light again. <laughs> so that's why the butterfly, this is my personal symbol since, since then. And some interesting questions. Uh, Andrew, can I ask you something now? Because uh, you know better about how the, um, the recording and the solution focus conference is working. Uh, I would like also to hear some of the voices. I saw that uh, sure. uh, our, our uh, colleagues uh, wrote, chose to wrote uh, on, in the chat, but I would like to hear some voices because no. I will address some of the very interesting and insightful questions, I would say. Yeah. Now without modesty, <laughs> and I will be very glad to hear some of the some some of the answers. And of course, I understand if no one would like to answer to any question. <laughs> but because I truly believe in the power of this question, questions, if no one will choose to reply, at least at one or two, because I'm not using the 26 set uh, card set now because you don't have the time. I will send the, um, to the, the organizers the entire package with the, the questions for you to share to, to the audience. So, <laughs> so I, I will ask the first question. Okay. <laughs> so I said about four VUCA square qualities, vulnerability, uniqueness, courage, and authenticity. And I'm curious <laughs> from all four, if you would have to pick one to uh, increase in the next, let's say five months until the end of the year, which of the four would be? <laughs> I am very curious. Mm. That's, an, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, <laughs> I, let's go for authenticity. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, because uh, I like to, to build on the question. Of course. If you would have to think at a particular action to take to increase the level of authenticity, 
which would be one of his uh, actions? Mm. For, for me to take to increase my authenticity. Yes, yes. By the end of this year, 2022. <laughs> Excuse me while my son interacts with my dog in the kitchen next door. Um, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Um, if anybody else has one, please go to them while I think. <laughs> If, yeah, it, it's a question um, that requires I, time and maybe more time to think. I, and yes, I, I guess I could be more organized. I could, oh. <laughs> myself, I could keep myself more up to date and make sure I do all the things that I commit to doing in good time. Hmm. Okay. Yes. And you speak. You just mentioned your dog, yeah. <laughs> and as a parenthesis, uh, for me. Kids and um, pets, like a dog, are great examples of authenticity. Okay. <laughs> they don't wear masks. They say their word when they need something. They ask or they cry or they bark. <laughs> mm, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And I will dare now to go to a very smiley face that I see. And uh, I apologize if I would pronounce your name incorrectly. Aswin, Aswin or, yeah? <laughs> yeah, my name is Aswin. Aswin, thank you. Thank you for being here with us today, for choosing to, to offer me some time, some, of, some uh, valuable time from your life today. Thank you very much. Yeah. And <laughs> I, will, I will dare to ask you now, and it's not part of this questionnaire, why have you chosen to attend this uh, session? with the person you haven't met quite at the beginning of attending uh, solution focus conferences but why why what was the the seed <laughs> you asked me what makes me choose this session yeah yeah why why you chose to um Enjoy offer you. me your time yes yeah yeah okay. 10 minutes Thank from your life because life, uh, because time is one of our precious, precious resources. It's one of the most precious, I would dare to say. <laughs> yeah, from the description of Fuka, so I just want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you joined some minutes after I, I um, yeah. explained the first acronym. So, uh, VUCA model. H have you heard before of, about VUCA, the model? Yeah. Yeah, I just read from your description. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, and uh, now because uh, I would like to, I would like to ask you a question. <laughs> it's about courage, and uh, I dare to say that all six of us, which are now in this call, who are now in this call, we are courageous, <laughs> mm -hmm. and. Uh, in your case, when was the last time you felt the most courageous and why? If you can share with us to, yeah. to inspire us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think I'm a kind of person who, who is afraid of height, you know, uh, uh, location, height location. Mm -hmm. So, there was one time I was in Vietnam and I did the rock climbing. You see, suddenly I was so high in there because keep keep climbing. I focused on the process and suddenly I was in the top and I was so surprised. So, so before I thought that I was afraid of being high and then it was not my issue. In, in, by the way, in fact, I don't know why. Mm. Yeah, that's that. I think. Oh, I did that. Mm -hmm. I think that was a card to try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you think at the level of the courage in that particular moment when you are on top of the world, let's say, and if you would think of a situation from uh, this this week, let's say, or this uh, period of time from let's say from July until today. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. For uh -huh. which situation you can use the same level of courage from there on top, from when you are on top of the world. <laughs> there is a particular situation in your life, uh, personal mm. or career-wise, that you mm. that courage could uh, be very helpful. <laughs> mm. Okay, um, group coaching. Yeah, I've never done group coaching before, so mm. so I tried once and it didn't work as I expected, but I learned from that, yeah. I learned from the, that moment that I was not a good speaker. So the way I deliver was not good. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's something I learned from that. But the, mo the model I, I, the model of the group coaching, they, mm -hmm. they found it good. So mm -hmm. still okay. So this, this month I, I'm, I will be working on this, how to deliver a good speech mm. yeah and because i you mentioned about group coaching and now in my my head there are several scenarios <laughs> running mm. and uh, I, i'm curious are you a solution focused coach um psychotherapist can you share more with us <laughs> uh, i'm a coach but uh, from, uh, but i'm still working on my towards my hcc Mm -hmm. I'm not specialized in solution focus, but I read many books and mm -hmm. many articles related to solution focus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your precious insights and for the courage to share with us from your life experience. <laughs> yeah, thank you also for the, for the time. <laughs> thank you. Uh, now I will dare to, to go to Timishwara. If Timishwara wants to speak, <laughs> and uh, I will dare to ask Ovidiu, uh, the, the other Romanian in this call, <laughs> when, what is his, let's say, biggest fear? Um, yeah, good question. Um, I think one of, one of the biggest uh, fear is uh, fail uh to fail yeah mm. and i don't want to fail and, and, and that's why it is uh, <clears throat> somehow i try always to prepare uh for different situations so to be able to avoid failing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of course not always works so yeah it happens okay. All right. And uh, I will dare to ask you what I ask as, as, as Vin. <laughs> Are you a solution focused coach, a practitioner, uh, um, I mean, a uh, um, psychotherapist, uh, change strategist? <laughs> which is your head? Which is your head that you are wearing every, in, in, the, in everyday life? in your career like yes, so uh, right now i'm a lean manufacturing consultant i don't, wow. don't know if you heard about lean manufacturing part uh but not on manufacturing on uh, indirect area mm. yeah so this is what i'm dealing with now and happily i uh, got uh, in contact with solution focus several years ago i think the first my first uh, interaction was in 2016 or, or oh. 2013 i don't know exactly but yeah anyway uh, i really like this concept and uh, yeah, that's why i tried uh, to follow it and to be part of some other uh, some other events mm -hmm. all right you gave me now gave me now uh, some uh, some information that i can use so I have another question for you. You said you are afraid of failure, yes? And thinking of lean, from the lean system, what you can use to, let's say, to, to decrease a bit of the level of fearing the failure? Of course, there are several tools. I think one of the most known is, um, uh, FMEA, uh, which is a little bit combined with Six Sigma, not necessarily only Lean, uh, and the, the acronym came from 
failure effects, uh, so FMEA, uh, failure modes and effect analysis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just think about what can go wrong and then think about some kind of solutions in order mm -hmm. to uh, prevent the, that, uh, that happening. Yeah? So this is some, so something that um, is part of your preparation for something. Either is a workshop, either is a, I don't know, uh, manufacturing something or keep mm -hmm. a training or do a presentation or even a discussion with your son. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. <laughs> and have you used something from Lean? for uh, the, the failure uh, scenarios. <laughs> Can you repeat, please? If you have used from the Lean, from the Lean system, what you have described to us now, if you apply the Lean to decrease the level of fear with regards to failures in life. Yeah, sometimes. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, because sometimes you just want to do something, you know, and just mm -hmm. do it. And then you just realize that, oh my God, something went wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going with another question. Uh, in my um, coaching session, I like a lot to work also with colors. That's why I chose several colors for um, the cards. Uh, I have question in the in the book in which you need to use colors to draw something. So I will uh, ask you a video, if you'd have to choose a color for the fear of failing, which that color would be? Red. Red. And the, the only, I have only one question for you at the moment, and you can take the feelings and the emotion, emo, emotion associated with this question and dig in more in the next uh, minutes, hours, uh, days, weeks of your life. So red, and in which color would you like to transform the red? <laughs> in my favorite one, in blue, of course, or in green to make it so, you know? <laughs> okay, I like blue, blue is my favorite color too. <laughs> Actually, I, I should have asked uh, vice versa, you know, to have it green, uh, like the fear, and then red when it's solved, because we you know green to be something which is not uh, red yet, Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and red being, uh, if we make an analogy with fruits, for example, yeah, mm -hmm. when we have a fruit, uh, it's not uh, good to eat, it's green, and then uh, when it's red, you can eat it, but whatever. Yeah, so red and blue remains. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you, F thank you. F for thank ha you. having the courage to share with us and to speak with me, <laughs> to interact with me directly. Thank you. From Eucharist to Mishrara. <laughs> Christine. Christine, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. And what brought you here with us, with me? A person okay. uh, not, so, not, not familiar at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, think, I think your concept of uh, FUCA is uh, interesting to me mm -hmm. uh, because I've been, I've been kind of playing in the playground of uh, we space like collective space group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. also um, have you know I, I'm I'm also uh, trained in solution focus brief coaching but the other part of uh, what I've been doing is um, I run or facilitate a group of deep listening mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. circle so it's more allowing people to be listened and to be heard to share from uh, from their in their experience Mm -hmm. and um to be authentic because when mm -hmm. when you talk about oh i think this politics is this it's let's aboutness so mm -hmm. the idea is of uh, i i see it through my practice that when people are speaking from their experience mm -hmm. they cannot not to be authentic <laughs> um and also the ideas of uh giving space for others here this is your time to share mm -hmm. and we listen and and then uh, the others will give uh, kind of I call it a gift of reflection. So instead of like oh yeah no you should do this instead of this or why, why don't it? it's more like oh this is what I hear when you say this. So um, it's aligned with with of course one of that is authenticity and mm -hmm. also courage you know, to be able to share because I and therefore I, I I I'm I'm very curious and also 
gone through a lot of different uh, process and method on what is it, how how can we be together in a group <laughs> with presence? Therefore, I'm. That's why I'm interested in, in <laughs> your approach. Now you you based on what I I so much enjoyed the the power and the energy created in the in the groups because I was from my 26 question I was choosing some and one of the questions that I would like to ask you now is not one of the chosen one. <laughs> you are speaking about deep listening and now. I will uh, be curious to find out from you or from other uh, colleagues, when was the last time when you listened deeply to your intuition? <laughs> um, I guess yesterday when I do um, a coaching exchange with another solution focus coach, uh, it's, it's um, I would say every day there's part of me that <laughs> listen, mm -hmm. even though I don't know what to do. Like I just listen mm -hmm. and and go through. It's it's mostly when I read when I write my book. Oh, um, that's that's when I'm listening to my intuition. Mm. And what tip can you share with us? How we can um, have a deep listening? When it's when it's about our intuition, our gut feelings, what is your tip for us today? <laughs> oh, that's a very interesting question. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> uh, it's important for me to. I think it's important because then I can hear it for myself yeah. as well. Um, so yeah. this is what I learned. I think we. I feel for me we are better listening to others than to ourselves. Um, <laughs> So with the deep listening, what happened is um, how can we create a container to allow mm -hmm. the spoken mm -hmm. be in place? Um, and I always, I always come to a concept of uh, heart space, where it's a container where any feeling can be in. Mm -hmm. So instead of bad or good, this or that, can I at least for a moment to allow it, you know, I, I have no idea what I can do. I should, and then, you know, I have this, yeah, I should do this instead of that. Like, you should not do this. Like, what about this and that? In a way, instead of like having a conversation with that or like, no, I don't like that. It's like, <laughs> hey, I see that. Okay, mm -hmm. it can be here. And then, and then have the other part of me to say, yeah, I know, I know you don't know. <laughs> and we got through that part, this the shoot, and it it never worked. So let let's be here now. Mm. Let's be here and and notice, mm. um, because that's the only way I can move forward. So that's what I know. So for me, it's more about first of all know the feeling of my thought. Like when mm -hmm. I, when I, you know, I have thoughts. What is the feeling behind it? And I can I feel it in body. Like how how does it fit in my space sometimes mm -hmm. because sometimes like I'm you know I, I don't have a lot of space so with that feeling I said okay you know what do I need what do I mm -hmm. feel oh I feel very anxious I feel sad or I feel angry I feel upset and when I judge people sometimes like why do I judge that person and then I realize there's something in me that I need to work on <laughs> because I'm judge judging others on specific thing, like why is it I'm so upset with that, but not with the others? Mm -hmm. not with the so it just slowing down to say what what is it in there that in me that invitation mm -hmm. to work it out. Anyhow, <laughs> wow! Thank you very much, Christine. It, it you literally show now. I mean, at least for me, vulnerability uniqueness, courage, and authenticity through your speech. And uh, thank you very much. And I couldn't, I see what you have in as a background and you are speaking about group, the power of the group of the power of togetherness. And I see trees. And I don't know how, if you read that book about the, um, the secret life of trees. I read it partially, some, some, some uh, just some parts, some quotes and, uh, 
And I do believe that we can learn a lot, of course, from nature generally, but specifically now speaking about trees and the power of the connection, <laughs> the way they interconnect and every seed organically grows. And I'm so happy to have you to be with another four very, very courageous and so nice human beings today in uh, Thursday, 4th of August. <laughs> And uh, as I said, I don't want to take more of your time. And uh, I think in five, maximum 10 minutes, we'll finish. I would like you to go with the, let's say, with a visualization exercise. It's like in a form of a question, but you can take the question and uh, draw, paint based on that question. And the, the, the question is like this. Imagine watching a movie about the next seven years of your life. What are the main scenes you like to see? <laughs> and from the, that? yes. No, can you repeat that again, please? I will send the, the, all my questions from the, the, the book to the organizer and they will uh, cascade them. So the no. question is, imagine watching a movie about the next seven, I put seven years, but can be three years, five years, you choose the number of your life. What are the main scenes you like to see in that movie? <laughs> and there is a follow-up question on this. From the scenes you saw, which one lights you up the most and why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to share some, someone of you want to share something with regards to these questions now? <laughs> you are so bright. I'm looking at your faces. I cannot see now Charlotte, but looking at uh, Andrew, Asvin and Charlotte, uh, and Christine, sorry, you, you, the, the brightness in your, uh, in your faces. Thank you very much for this gift. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to share, but not about, I, 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 I like to, contemplate and reflect on this question. I think that's a great question. <laughs> but I, I like I like to uh, share what is effective about this that I feel as mm -hmm. you say it. Mm -hmm. um, when you say it's about scene, you know, seven years, but scene. Yes, the scene is in movie is like, it's it's a chunk, like when you edit it, you, you put it together. So when I hear that question, it feels, oh yeah, I can see, I can just create a picture that doesn't have to be the whole thing. It's just like, you know, where I am or mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's become manageable. It's become, oh yeah, that's, that's not difficult rather than, <laughs> oh, I have to like, whoa. so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, You are welcome. And I, I don't know if you have, if you have some questions for me or uh, something yeah. to share. <laughs> So I mean, I I I'm I know you're gonna share the questions and stuff like that. Um, perhaps you can tell a little bit of. Uh, you, I know also you said you know you are in the in the conference and this came out. Mm -hmm. But how does it help? Like where that start and how, how does that now make you become who you are? <laughs> using that you know knowing that i think that's those words are very important for you like very valuable mm -hmm. for you. so how does it help you and i guess i guess my question is in coaching yes in a group i don't know if it's one on one like how do you i know you you show me a little, show us a little bit of like how's it look like but mm -hmm. uh, yeah some examples how 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 if you can describe it the, the model, the VUCA squared, the model, okay. Uh, mainly I use the, the cards in one-to-one -one sessions. And uh, unfortunately, I would say unfortunately until now, I, would, I had only one group session within a company here as a demo session. But the, the cards, you can play with them in uh, at least three ways. I, I use it, I'm using the cards uh, playing with me. <laughs> from time to time uh, asking myself the question, taking time to reflect. I'm using them with my partner 
with my fiance. This is the second one with some of my friends. And you can use them in multiple forms. You, the, 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 the most I like, the, the, um, the way I use it, I use them now based on the energy of the group because I can select. So I go tomorrow to a company. Yes, Apple. <laughs> I like Apple products. So I take Apple. And uh, I go there with the 26 with a set. And I could, I would, I can choose to literally take one by one. I can mix the question and share to the audience and they will extract and ask the question. But what, we, what I, I prefer, it's at the beginning when I share about first about the VUCA, the, the model, the volatility, uncertainty, complexity and, uh, and ambiguity. And by the time I'm going to my model, I will feel the energy in the room. And then I decide what I do with the card. <laughs> what I use, because in, in the company I've been, I had only one hour in which I could preach my, <laughs> my model. And uh, I selected from, for, from home seven questions, but I didn't have the time because as it was in your cases, uh, Christine and uh, Aswin and Andrew, I asked a question and based on that, I really felt the need to ask you a different question, you know, that came like organically on top of some other question I have prepared in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people ask me what, why I wrote this book, what was the purpose, the objective, and what I want. <laughs> and um, my answer is that this is a part of me and what I want to achieve is that people that come across the book or want to have a coaching session with me. So this to be an inspiration to, to increase their level of courage at, at least with 1%. <laughs> and then I would be happy. <laughs> so I don't know if I uh, reply to your question. Moreover, now, because we are almost at the end, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, and I like to connect and speak with people and share from our experiences. Uh, as a background, because I'm a solution focused coach only from 2019 when I graduated here in Bucharest with Petra Mueller de Mari. Maybe some of you know about Petra, know, know who is Petra. Yes. I'm a, a strategist. I'm a change management strategist. I work in multinational company, for multinational company, and I decided to resign in 2016 because of a health issue. And from that, from 2016, first I was a an NGO <laughs> founder to raise the awareness for the disease. I had, and then from 2019, 19, I went to this uh, in the coaching and consultancy role with a small company, which is called Entrepreneur, <laughs> because I like this word from entrepreneur, entrepreneur from our core, from our inner <laughs> power, entrepreneur. That's why I, I named the company Entrepreneur, and I'm doing my best, especially in this uh, volatile, <laughs> uncertain ambiguous and complex time to, to keep my, my towel the way I chose. <laughs> but it's, it's very tough. <laughs> it's very tough. I don't know how it's for you. And yeah, and I would really like to end uh, our nice uh, interaction with a quote because at the end, of, at the, end of, the, of, of, the, of the book, I also chose some of my favorite quotes to share with people, with the readers and some inspirational favorite books and some inspirational uh, movies. <laughs> and I don't know if you heard about Philippe Petit. <laughs> Have you heard about? Uh, years ago, <laughs> someone walked on a rope between the uh, big towers in the United States in New York. This, is, this was an um, luckily, he's still alive, <laughs> Philippe Petit. And I would like to finish with a quote from his book. And he's saying like this, 
believe in the miracles that exist around you, inside others, in you. Go look for them. Feed your imagination. In this way, build your destiny. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for, for your time today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blessing from here and a big hug. I like, I'm a hugger. <laughs> I'm a huge hugger. <laughs> I hope to see you some other time or at least to virtually connect and write uh, to each other. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, that'd be great. And well done. Good luck with the book as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have another now prepared, but it will be about, uh, I can share with you. If there are only some, some really close friends in my family that know the subject, it will be about uh, one of the model of the VUCA square of my model, uh, my coaching model, and it's about her, Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> uh, cool. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your time. Have a great August and keep healthy on all levels. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gabriela, and you too. And you too. Thank you very much. Thank you.